Hi everyone, let's talk about the quacks of Quedlinburg. And I will admit up front that I bought this purely for the fact that it was nominated for the Kennespiel. I didn't know anything about it going in and it won one of my backer votes. And luckily, uh, I've really enjoyed it. It is a fun push your luck bag building game. And I'm usually not on the side of randomness. I think I've explained, I've complained enough about uh, dice and things in some games on various videos that I've done. And yeah, there's a healthy dose of luck in this game, but I have kind of, I've enjoyed it past that. There are definitely times when no matter how well you've built your bag and uh, and bought all of these really interesting things that you're hoping will combine together, you can just draw those white chips. The, the, in, the, in the ones we've played, we've only played with uh, set one and two so far. In the ones we've seen, there's no way of getting rid of the white chips. And I suppose you, you always have to have that risk of exploding. But yeah, sometimes you can just get really unlucky, and that is a shame. And sometimes, you know, the, the fortune favor the fortune cards will really favor uh, a player in a certain position than another. But despite all of that, I've had loads of fun just yeah, just just desperately trying to fill up that part. Finally did it in this playthrough. But uh, yeah, the the interesting decisions where these kind of grow over time, which is a good it's a good way of stepping up. This is, you know, the, the Kennespiel games tend to be Gateway Plus games. Yeah, I was a bit surprised to see Heaven and Ale in there. But not that it's a hugely heavy game, but it's definitely a, a, a bit of a leap, I think, from this or Ganshon Clever. The, the way that it kind of starts off with fewer of these tiles out in the first place that you don't have as many things to explain and they are kind of introduced to you bit by bit is a nice way of introducing people to it. And that it's got it's got a nice catch up mechanism with the rat tails that you get to start a bit further along if you are really behind on points, which sometimes can be an element in deciding, you know, if you've exploded and do you want the money or the points? Well, I'm kind of happy with the money because if I don't get the points, I can see how many you're getting and I can see that, oh, I'd have all of these rat tails. I would start this far ahead next round. It can, you know be too much of a risk putting yourself too far behind in points, but it feels like you are always in the game. I've only played it two player, by the way, so it's not like you can be, you know, fourth place massively behind. I don't know how it works in four players. Well, I know how it works. I don't know how it goes there. But yeah, it, it feels like you are always in it and that you can always do something and that you can forge fairly different paths by, you know, just by going down different ways. It, it's... You're always limited to only getting one or two chips when you buy them. But yeah, you can go for the, in the set ones anyway, you know, the combo of, you know, I, I want to go really far into reds, so I want a load of oranges, which can be a little bit of a waste because you can only buy two chips and they only cost three each. Or, you know, I really, like Marty, really went for the purple ones because if I keep drawing loads of those, that's just points every round and advancing my, uh, my droplet marker or if you really, really want to hope to mitigate the white chips, you can go really heavy into the yellows, which will put the white chips back if you draw them straight after. There are a lot of different things that, you know, in various combinations, they can work really, really well together. And yeah, the having those four different sets, and it says, you know, once you're familiar with the game, feel free to, you know, customize them and mix and match those sets. So I think with that, it's got a lot of uh, variability going on in there as well, even though the core thing of, you are starting off with the same bag of uh, of chips and uh, customizing it over the course of the game and hoping to yeah push your luck just enough to get the most money and points that you can out of it largely that stays the same but what those chips do gets very very different and i really like that fortune cards it's nice just having a little thing at the start of the round as i said sometimes it can be really beneficial to uh, one player over the other but largely it's just nice having this oh, oh upgrade a chip Oh, do you, do you want, you can have a, a, a black chip or or have any two chip, or you can get some rubies instead. There's a lot of options in there that's just a nice little touch as well. And uh, also there is a, a bit of a variance, a bit of an advanced variance that I think once you have the rules down to the game, I feel like you might as well play with this. It adds these test tubes to the bottom of your player board. And when you get the opportunity to move your droplet marker along, you can do it as normal and move it along here, or you can move it along, you have another droplet marker and you can move it along this test tube track and you can get rubies or points or chips of certain values to the point where you could get a yellow four chip if you get it all the way along. Uh, so yeah, I think now that we're, yeah, once you've got the rules down, it feels like you might as well play with that. 
it is nice having you know the player aid at the bottom to start with as well that just tells you basically everything tells you what you start with tells you what puts you at risk of exploding and what will happen there yeah i feel like yeah maybe maybe not it's not gateway because you have all of these different powers and things to explain that people need to keep track of but yeah i think it would make a great one to introduce as uh, as the uh, the step up game and yeah while I was a bit wary to begin with when we were playing. I have had a lot of fun with it. And yeah, I think it's a really... I, I tend to like uh, bag builders anyway, but I've played... What are the ones I've played? Orleon and Altiplano, heavier games. Yeah, you know, medium, medium heavy games maybe. And yeah, having this uh, this on the lighter side and the, the quicker side as well. The playthrough hopefully came out fairly brief. But uh, yeah, to, to in a normal game, you would just be doing this all simultaneously and kind of keeping track of what everyone else is on or how far do I push my luck further because I can see that well they've got a black chip and mine hasn't come out yet or you know that I, I want to roll the dice this turn and I'm only two behind that person and they've stopped do I push it one more time there there is all of that kind of keeping an eye on what other people are doing but most of the play is simultaneous so it's quite quick as well and yeah in general I've really really enjoyed it so it's it's coming out in English as well at some point I'm not sure who's doing an English version maybe it's Schmidt but yeah there is an English one coming out but I would say there is everything on Board Game Geek there are English rules you know f approved by the publisher and card translations and little translations of what these say you can print out as well it's, uh, someone has done i should look up names of things shouldn't i i haven't done it yet because i can kind of remember what uh, what these ones do that we've played with but someone has done you know art versions that you could print these out and have a little player aid for everyone to look at next to them so even though it, an english version is coming out if you wait a bit but i think the the german version it needs a little bit of work on your end but i think it's pretty th there's not that much to do and yeah, I wanted it now, but yeah, that's that's the quacks of Quedlinburg. The playthrough is there, though. I just this is just what I think about it. The playthrough should hopefully help you decide whether it will be one for you. But that is the quacks of Quedlinburg. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.